This meteorologist Mark Molnar is a special coverage on Hurricane Irma. Catastrophic hurricane continues to borderline on Category 4 slash Category 5. This storm promises to be something that is not unlike any storm we've seen in quite some time across the area. The best way to describe it is a Katrina type scenario. Now let's take a look at the system. I'm not doing viewer send in photos or videos because we have a time constraint due to Hurricane Irma and other major hurricanes that are out there in the Atlantic. Take a look at Hurricane Irma here, continuing to expand in coverage here. It went through an eyewall replacement cycle earlier. You can see that inner eyewall collapsed in the outer eyewall, which is about 50 nautical miles, is expanding and it is taking over. And it is bo boosting up those wind speeds as, as it starts to head over warmer waters and lower wind shear here. So we could expect some strengthening through the next 18 to 24 hours. Now taking a look at the big picture, you see the satellite views here. You see see not very hard to pick out Irma here. It's the biggest storm. Behind it, Jose is a Category 4, a dangerous Category 4. It's taking aim on the northern uh, Leeward Islands here again with uh, St. John as well as St. Martin uh, maybe clipping the U.S. and British Virgin Islands again, which is not very good news out here. And we're also dealing with Hurricane Katia here in the southern Gulf of Mexico here, which is going to continue to move as possibly obtaining major hurricane status as it moves towards Mexico. So getting right into the particulars of Hurricane Irma here, take a look at this storm. It's going to continue westward shift here towards the Florida Keys. If you're in the Florida Keys, you should not have stayed there because I'll tell you what, this storm is going to run right over you as it heads towards the north-northwest. The system is wobbling a little bit ever so slightly to the west as it rides around the periphery of this upper high just south of Bermuda. So the Keys portions in... This does put Miami on the eastern side. So even though it's shifted a little bit further west away from Miami, Miami, you are still going to take a very bad hit here because you're going to be on the eastern side. The eastern eye wall, being that it's so wide, may clip Miami as well as, as many of those major outer bands on the eastern side. On the western side here, you're along the west coast of Florida. You're really going to have to watch this too, all the way up to Tampa, Naples up to Tampa, because this system has been trending west. And if it does skirt the coast here, like it's starting to look like it will, we could have some major storm surges on the west coast of Florida as well. We're going to continue to watch it here at Media Marks Weather Northeastern, taking it in as a strong Category 4 or even a maybe a borderline 5 here. I expect it to make landfall somewhere between the 150 to 160 mile per hour wind category. And that is not going to be very good news for the southern Florida Peninsula. Now you have the track. The track is going to take it right up the spine of Florida. This is one of the worst possible tracks for Florida. So needless to say, if you're near the coastline, you should have gotten out quite a while ago. So there you have it. We have a major hurricane. As you see, it's starting to bend a little bit more towards Cuba as well. So it'll have a little bit more interaction with Cuba. But one thing to know, water temperatures here. Let's take a look at the big picture here. Take a look back here, back towards Jose. Water temperatures were running into the mid 80s. Here off of Florida, they're running into the upper 80s, 88 to 91 degrees. This system's going to be heading into water that is tremendously warmer, say the least. So once this thing heads inland, it will become a heavy rain producer, but it should still remain a solid hurricane, possibly well inland, maybe as far west there as Orlando. So this system is going to cause hurricane force winds across much of the area. And needless to say, people in Miami and the Keys are really going to take a brunt of this storm and maybe even as far west as Naples in areas like that, because this system is a very large system, very large. Uh, diameter I, and as I said before, it's heading over some very favorable waters. There's Cadia heading out into Mexico, should cause some damage there as well. And there is Jose continuing to, it's going to move right into the northeastern Caribbean islands here. This is not good news. These are areas that were run over by Irma and pretty much destroyed many of the structures and even concrete structures failing. So now they're going to take another hit, which is very bad news. So this system, yes, we think it will start to try to recurve, but somewhere south of Bermuda, it gets hung up. So after that, after days four and five, it's kind of in question. So, so let's take a look at the storm surge across Florida. You take a look at the Florida Peninsula here. It's Miami especially the east side of the storm, northern Florida Keys, 
even parts of the central Florida Keys, we're going to be seeing storm surges easily 12 feet or higher. And you add the waves on top of that, we could be looking at 20 plus feet in some of those channeled water areas. If you're in Miami Beach on southward and southwestward towards Key Largo and maybe as far west as Key West, you're not going to want to be anywhere near the water. You should be out at this time. Uh, the western side of uh, Florida, that's where the problems lie because it's going to see how far west this system can travel places like Naples all the way up to Tampa and there's still going to be major problems even on the west coast of Florida. This is a Florida affair here basically because this system is going to basically move and expand its wind field all over Florida and its path of destruction. So if you haven't gotten out and you're thinking about it, now might be the time to put those plans into place here and head north up the peninsula. Now, let's take a look at some of the, uh, there's the satellite again of Irma looking much more well-defined after those eyewall replacement cycles. So needless to say, and here is the hurricane watches and warnings across the area. You can see them for Cuba, the Bahamas, and there it is, South Florida, all the way up, about halfway up the coast, then we extend those hurricane watches as well. So heed all of those watches and warnings because things are really not looking good at this time. This looks like probably one of the worst case scenarios for Florida. This was the scenario we were hoping that would not happen, and it is happening. As I said before, this system is a system that is unlike all the other hurricanes you've seen because it is simply put, it's a catastrophic hurricane. It is, even if it comes in as a strong four, this system is very large. It has a lot of damage radius and potential. And it's proven itself across the Caribbean islands as being a killer, a catastrophic killer. So this system is meant to be taken very seriously. It's not your run-of-the-mill Category 2 or Category 3 hurricane. This is a major storm. So heed those watches and warnings. We're heading right into the uh, rainfall totals across the area. We're going to focus right in on the southeast here. Take a look at this. Florida, Miami, even portions of Cuba, all the way up to the Carolinas, eastern Georgia. That's where, especially I-95 corridor, even the central portion of Florida, Maybe we're spanning some of that into the western part of the state too. 10 to 15 inches of rain locally, 25 inches likely. That'll all get all the way up into portions of the southern Appalachians and even parts of, of North Carolina as well. Heading on into the pattern, that trough lifting out of the northeast, that should allow the subtropical high. It's going to move around the subtropical high here, and we'll see conditions improve across the area. So that's what we're going to be looking at here. And take a look at the, uh, the forecast across the northeast. Take a look at this. Across the northeast here, we're taking a look at uh, temperatures and rainfall mounts here in the northeast. Moving pretty much out of the region, taking a look at the Susquehanna Valley, Hudson Valley, over to the Allegheny Valley. We're looking really sunny. This, the fact that we're south or north of all these fronts that have moved through, was going to save us from Irma and all these future hurricanes that try to move up into this region. So not looking at any raindrops here across the northeast into your Sunday. Take a look at this. Temperatures looking really nice across the area. We're actually breaking 70 in places like Binghamton, Scranton, Harrisburg, places like Pittsburgh, over to Erie, Warren, Bradford, and up to Buffalo. Take a look at that into your Monday. Look at this. Very beautiful across the northeast. We may see a little bit of a stray shower south of the Pennsylvania turn pike here but really not looking at anything major and then for your tuesday look at this not still not too bad holding on to mostly sunny skies across much of the region so we're going to take a look at the five-day forecast from my hometown viewers from Binghamton to scranton all points in between sarawigo waverly and tonconic take a look at this stretching from your saturday look at the weekend sunny both days starting off a nice sleeping weather start into the 40s maybe even upper 30s in some of those colder valleys and look at that warming up to near 70 by Sunday into Monday, Tuesday, look at those low 70s, low humidity, and only maybe a chance of a stray shower later on in the forecast period. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Mark, subscribe to me on YouTube at Mark, comment Twitter at WX Northeastern, Google Plus at Mark. Don't forget to visit my websites, www.mediamark.com and www.weathernortheastern.com. Thanks for watching here at Mark's Weather Northeastern. Stay ahead of the storm at Hurricane Irma.